Shabbat Shalom, my brothers and sisters. This is Miss Dia returning from a long-winded break of writing and just, you know, posting to you guys. For those of you who watch my videos, all praises, um, and all praises to the Father just for being able to just um, even reach one soul and connect with you with the Most High's Word through music, um, I just wanted to come on here today and, um, read a chapter from the book of Joshua. Um, I know a lot of our brothers and sisters tend not, tend to stray away from the book of Joshua, Enoch, and Jubilees. Um, I read them. I find, um, that there's a lot that do, that lines up with the KJV and um, just goes a little bit more in depth, just like the Apocrypha. Um, it was taken out of the KJV, and um, it lines up with the KJV, so um, I find the same thing with the Book of Joshua as well. Um, this is going to be a real quick episode um, of um, Women of Worth, and um, just showing you how we need to just as women, we need to be bold and stand up in these times and just stand for this word, stand for the Father. The Father said, um, our Lord and Savior says, who will stand up for me? Uh, we can't just sit idly by and let things happen, um, waiting for something to fall out the sky. The Most High will move when you move. The Spirit will move when the Spirit um, sees that you're open, right? And can use you to fulfill. So, um, for those of you who don't know, again, I'm Missia, um, Maine's princess, and I um, just like time to time to share videos with you guys, and um, you know, just spread this gospel, um, spread this knowledge, spread an awareness that um, we as women. We um, have work to do. Just like our men, they have work to do. We have work to do. Um, it's not just for the men. Whether it's in our homes, um, for helping to fulfill our husband's um, vision that the Most High has instilled in him. And hopefully he has a vision for you and your family. Um, it's good to just sit down and talk about that from time to time. And um make sure we're leading our children righteously and raising them up according to righteousness and following these laws and statutes and for us to expect them to do so we have to do so um so again i'm just going to read from the book of joshua today i wanted to read from um joshua chapter 19 and for those of you who don't have it, you might have a book. This is the book that I'm reading, the book of Enoch, Jubilees, and Joshua. Um, my husband also has a book. It just It's just the book of Joshua. And then I also noticed, like, if you have the KJV Bible app with the Apocrypha, that um, I think it was last year, the book of Joshua, Jubilees, and Asher was, Joshua was um, added to it. So if you scroll down all the way to the very bottom after the Apocrypha, you'll see those other three books added to your KJV Apocrypha um, Bible app, okay? So, um, women, if you have a book of Joshua, please read along with me in the chapter 19. Um, if you don't, you can download it uh, or um, just go to Google and type in the Book of Joshua PDF and it will come up that way. That's how I used to do it before I even knew that my husband had this book. Okay, so I'm going to start off from the beginning so we get a gist of the whole story before we get to the point. And this is, um, the title of this video will be, and all the episodes to come will be um, Woman of Worth. So W-O-W, -W, wow, okay? All right. Jasher chapter 19. 
And the cities of Sodom had four judges to four cities, and these were their names. And if I screw some of these names up, please forgive me. <laughs> Sarak in the city of Sodom, Sharkad in Gomorrah, Zabnak in Adma, and Menon in Zeboyim. And Eliezer, Abraham's servant, applied to them different names, and he converted Sarak to Shakra and Sharkad to Shakura and Zebnat to Kezobim, and Menan to Mazlodin. And by desire of their four judges, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah had beds erected in the streets of the cities. And if a man came to these places, they laid hold of him and brought him to one of their beds. And by force bade him to lie in them. And as he lay down, three men would stand at his head and three at his feet and measure him by the length of the bed. And if the man was less than the bed, these six men would stretch him at each end. And when he cried out to them, they would not answer him. So you have to think these men. And of course, we read this is already this Sodom and Gomorrah and the other cities encompassing. Um, they would have these beds in the streets, and if somebody's passing through a sojourn or something like that, they would have them lay in these beds. And we're just reading here, they would stretch this man from limb to limb. You know, that's torture, okay? Um, and remember that if you're in North America, which is one of our captivities, the KJV book says that this is spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? So what we're about to read here is no different from what they do here in America, okay? Verse 5, and if he was longer than the bed, they would draw together the two sides of the bed at each end until the man had reached the gates of death. And if he continued to cry out to them, they would answer him saying, Thus shall it be done to a man that cometh into our land. And when men heard all these sayings that the people of the cities of Sodom did, they refrained from coming there. So if you, if, if, like how America likes to portray themselves as the land of the greatest land or, um, and everybody wants to flock here from different countries because it's like you, the, you get this American dream. Right. That's what they that's what they sell to you. But if they told the truth, if people would tell the truth about what really goes on here, um, they wouldn't want to come here, you know, and many have seen what really goes on here. If they're not blind, they'd walk around with blinders on or just pretend it don't happen. They, t they, they leave. They, they know they, a, a lot of people don't even need to come here to see what's going on here because they see how the minorities, a.k.a. black people are treated okay the blacks and hispanics are treated horribly okay now if you're living it up in this captivity good for you um but we know that god's people are not okay so let's see verse seven um oh verse verse eight sorry and um, when a poor man came to their land, they would give him silver and gold and cause a proclamation in the whole city not to give him a morsel of bread to eat. And if the stranger should remain there some days and die from hunger, not having been able to obtain a morsel of bread, at his death, all the people of the city would come and take their silver and gold, which they had given him. Again, Sounds like America. We like to think that the stuff they give us, um, the crumbs that they're giving us, we're working for $10 an hour. You know, some of us are working for less than that, maybe a little bit more, but the work we're doing, we, we don't, uh, the, the, the pay rate don't add up. You know what I'm saying? Like we're working for crumbs and a lot of that crumbs is going off to pay taxes. It's going off to pay a debt that you, you try to provide a household for your, for your family. Um, you know, 
expensive food, food that's killing us. So it's like they make it seem like they're giving you something, whether it's EBT, child support, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, it's crumbs. Okay, because we know the bottom line is that no matter how much you're making or how you're living, their agenda is to kill you. Their agenda is to keep you in the dark. Okay, not knowing who you are, that you're a child of God, that you, who your nationality is, um, that you... Um, so, so you don't know that you should be eating certain stuff or not eating certain stuff, okay? Um, like sh pork, shrimp, lobster, all of that stuff. Um, don't know that you worshiping on the wrong day of the week, which is an abomination to the father, and that women should be dressing a certain way. All these things. So they 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 selling you all this stuff and it feel good and it seem good, but meanwhile you're living in sin and you will ultimately be destroyed because of it. Sounds just like this. So I'm going to keep reading and stop babbling. Okay. Verse 9. And those that would recognize the silver and gold which they had given him took it back. And at his death they would strip him of his garments and they would fight about, they would fight about them. And he would prevail over his neighbor. Mm. And he would prevail over his neighbor, took them. They would carry that after him and bury him under some of the shrubs in the desert. So they did all the days to anyone that would come into the land and die in their land. So these wicked people of Sodom and Gomorrah is waiting for people to just come into their land. They're sojourning, just going through, passing through, whatever. Um, you know, like a lot of people do today, coming to America and not thinking. Um, and not knowing that, you know, ultimately they, 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 they seek your destruction. Okay. So, um, so people will come through their land and they would give you silver and gold. Okay. As if, as if they're helping you and then, but then secretly unbeknownst to you, everybody in the city, like, okay, don't sell to him. Don't you know, don't give him nothing, you know, so how are you going to survive while you're there, unless you brought a whole lot of food with you, okay, all right, verse 11, and in the course of the time, Sarah and Eliezer, this is Sarah Abraham's wife, Eliezer is his servant, for those who didn't know, um, in the course of this time, Sarah and Eliezer, to Sodom, to see a lot and inquire after his welfare, okay? Um, Eliezer went to Sodom, and he met a man of Sodom fighting with a stranger, and the man of Sodom stripped the poor man of all his clothes and went away. The poor man cried to Eliezer and supplicated his favor on account of what this man of Sodom had done to him. And he, and he said to him, why dost thou... Um, why dost thou act thus to the poor man who come to thy land? Why are you acting like this to him? And the man of Sodom answered Eliezer, saying, Is this thy brother? Or have the people of Sodom made thee a judge to this day, that thou may speak about this man? So who is you? Who made you judge? Like we like to say, who made you judge and jury? You know, who is you? Is he some kin to you? What you speaking up about him for? That's what the man of Sodom is saying. Okay, and Eliezer strove with the man of Sodom on account of the poor man, standing up for him, okay, and when Eliezer approached to recover the poor man, and when Eli uh, the poor man's clothes from the man of Sodom, he hastened, and with his stone, he smote Eliezer in the forehead, so the man of Sodom struck Eliezer in the forehead, and the blood flowed copiously from Eliezer's forehead, and when the man saw the blood, he caught hold of Eliezer, saying, Give me my hire for having rid thee of this bad blood that was in thy forehead, for such is the custom and the law in this in our land. And when and Eliezer said to him, Thou hast wounded me, and require me to pay thee. And Eliezer would not hearken to the words of the man of Sodom. Again, many of you have many different stories and accounts of uh, um of how 
they treat us badly and expect us to pay them. Um, they wrongfully jail us, um, beat us in the street, shoot us down, but yet our families have to pay. We have to pay this huge amount, uh, whether it's time in jail, uh, whether it's monetarily, we got to pay the government this ridiculous amount of money, okay? Um, half the time, they're the one plant the stuff on you, you know? whether it's drugs or whatever it is, they're, they're the ones giving you the drugs in in the hood, you know, but then we have to pay when we get caught. And I say we, my people get caught using it, selling it, whatever it is. Kind of like this, okay? So, um, verse 19, and the man laid hold of Eliezer and brought him to Shakra, the judge of Sodom, for judgment. And the man spoke to the judge, saying, I beseech thee, my lord, thus had this man done, for I smote him with a stone, that blood flowed from his forehead, and he is unwilling to give me my hire. And the judge said to Eliezer, This man speaketh the truth to thee, give him his hire, for this is the custom in our land. And Eliezer heard the words of the judge, and he lifted up a stone, and smote the judge, and the stone struck on his forehead. And blood flowed copiously from the forehead of the judge. And Eliezer said, If this then is the custom in your land, give thou unto this man what I should have given him. For this has been thy decision, thou didst decree it. So, <laughs> Eliezer is so sick. He's saying, He's saying, so, so he pretty much took up a stone and bopped the judge in his head like, okay, well, if it's your custom, what I owe him, you pay him now because you're supposed to get. So, <laughs> so he's saying, he's saying, okay, so now that I hit you in the head, judge, you owe me money. But you know what? I don't want the money. Give it to this man. Get the money you owe me now for me hitting you in the head to this man. Okay. Because this is your law, right? Okay. Smart. So Eliezer then left the man of Sodom with the judge and he went away. And when the kings of Elam had made war with the kings of Sodom, the kings of, um, let me see, the kings of Elam captured all the property of Sodom and they took Lot captive with his property. And when it was told to Abraham, he went and made war with the kings of Elam and he recovered them from their hands, all the properties of Lot, as well as the property of Sodom. At that time, the wife of Lot bare him a daughter, and he called her name Paltith, saying, Because God had delivered him and his whole household from the kings of Elam, and Paltith, daughter of Lot, grew up, and one of the men of Sodom took her for a wife. Okay, so this is again why I say I like to read this because it goes more in depth. Because in the KJV, it touches on things, but it doesn't go in depth. Okay, again. The book was bigger than it is today. We took a lot of things out. And was, we know there's a lot more books. Uh, you know, like 203 books or something like that. And the book also refers to Jasher. Okay. So um, we read in the KJV that when Lot and his wife and his two daughters fled when the city was going to be destroyed. Right. And then the wife looked back. Well, this is why. Okay, and I'm getting ahead of the story, but um, I mean, this is in the story, but we're going to read here that Lot had more than just the two we read about in the KJV because um, w if you remember um, when the men came, when the Sodomites came to the door asking for the men, Lot came out and was like, well, I have two daughters. You could have them. They'd never known men. Well, if that's the case, we're reading here that one of them did have a husband. So he had more than two daughters at the time. Okay. The two that laid with him and had children, it was more than that. Okay. So anyway, back to the story. Um, so, so Paltit was the daughter of Lot. That's what we read in 24, 25. And a poor man came into the city to seek maintenance, and he remained in the city some days. 
Okay, remember when you come into the city, they give you gold and silver, okay, as if you could buy stuff. But we all know that they're plotting against him because they want him to die. So they won't sell nothing to him, no food, no nothing. They say, don't feed this man, okay? They want them to die. All right. So a poor man came into the city to seek maintenance. He remained there for some days, and all the people of Sodom caused the proclamation of their customs not to give this man a morsel of bread to eat until he dropped dead upon the earth. So they did. And Paltit, the daughter of Lot, saw this man lying in the streets, starved with hunger, and no one would give him anything to stay alive, and he was just upon the point of death. Her soul was filled with pity on account of the man, and she fed him secretly with bread for many days, and the soul of this man was revived. Okay? 28. For when she went forth to fetch water, she would then put the bread in the water pitcher, and when she came to the place where the poor man was, she would take the bread from the pitcher and give it to him to eat. So she did many days. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wondered how this man could bear starvation for so many days. And they said to each other, This can only be that he eats and drinks, for no man can bear starvation for so many days or live as this man has without even his countenance changing. And the three men concealed themselves in a place where the poor man was stationed to know who it was that brought him the bread to eat. And Paltit, daughter of Lot, went forth that day to fetch water, and she put bread into her pitcher of water, and she went to draw water by the poor man's place. And she took out the bread from the pitcher and gave it to the poor man, and he ate it. And the three men saw what Paltit did to the poor man, and they said to her, it is thou then who has supported him, and therefore he has not starved, nor changed his appearance, nor died like the rest. The three men went out of the place which they were concealed, and they seized Paltit and the bread which was in the poor man's hand. They took Paltit, just, so today, like, even so, um, I've seen stories, um, of, you know, people trying to go out and feed the poor, and in different states and stuff, you can't do that. They actually lock up the guy because he was trying to feed the poor, you know, bringing up food and stuff. And like, it might not be happening in your city or neighborhood, but it's happening. Okay. That's why we said we can't turn a blind eye when we know um, things are going on in different places. Like, why is it going, why, why, why you can't feed the poor? You know, what kind of place you call yourself? You call yourself the America, the great, we, but we're not taking care of the poor and the needy, you know? And, um... So they took the bread out of his hand and took Paltit, and they took Paltit and brought her before the judges, and they said to them, Thus did she do, and it is she who supplied the poor man with bread, therefore she that therefore he did not die at all this time. Now therefore declare to us punishment due to this woman for having transgressed our law. Okay, so everybody in cahoots from the judge on down, we already know that the book say that the 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 um that our our um, our judges, our rulers, our priests, our pastors, our um, elders, right, should have wisdom and should be teaching and and um, leading by example and not leading the str the flock astray, and um, should teach righteousness, right, um, and that's why we cannot have over us one of any of these other nations okay because they don't serve the most high god of israel okay okay 35 and the people of sodom and gomorrah assembled and kindled a fire in the street of the city and they took the woman and cast her into the fire and she was burned to ashes okay so they killed this woman at the stake they burned her alive because she was not like them, because she was not going to follow suit, fall in line, and just conform to the laws of their land, okay? Um, no, like, yeah, she died, but that's the death of a warrior spirit. That's the death of someone that died for having the fruits of the spirit, 
Okay, because you, if you, the books say, the Bible say, if you see a man that's hungry and you have food to give him, sufficient enough to give him, give to him. You know, don't hold back what you have. Okay, don't tell him go and come another day. It said that. So she was able to help and she helped. And she died for that. You know, and... A lot, and that's and that's the point here. I wanted to read uh, where I wanted to read that is because a lot of us are scared to do the things that we need to do because we don't know what the outcome may be, and that's because there is fear being instilled in you on what man can do to you. But at the end of the day, once you're reading this book and you're following the laws and statutes, now um, it's not enough just to read them and apply them in your household the works the works that you have to put in there is now okay now i know who i am i know that that i need to have the fruits of the spirit kindness meekness gentleness charity above all but you're not being charitable so what works are you putting in if you're not being charitable okay um it's not just about going out on on the highways and hedges trying to teach, trying to precept upon precept. Yes, if that's your calling, if that's what you're good at doing, do so. But maybe you're not good at doing so. Maybe you're, um, maybe you can just simply go out and help feed the poor. That is work. That's your work. Charity above all, okay, is what the most high loves. Because without the fruits of the spirit, we might as well be, of this righteous spirit, you might as well be just like everybody else out there, you know, and that's what Paltit says she wasn't going to do. I'm not going just because it's a law here and I could die for it or you could put me in jail or find me this amount of money. I'm just going to sit by, idly by and let and and do what you're doing too. She didn't do that. Okay. And, and she didn't hurt nobody while she was doing it. You know, she didn't come out of her demeanor to nobody she just simply did what the spirit led her to do that was charity she fed this man you know um a lot of us the books say a lot of us are going to be put in jail a lot of us are going to die a lot of us are going to be ripped from our families but at the end of the day you still have to fight and stand up for the most high and what you're saying that you're a part of. You say you're a part of this truth. You say you're a, a, a part of righteousness. You say you're on this straight and narrow path. Prove it. Show it. It ain't enough just to say it. The most I say they draw near to me with their lips, but with their actions, I can't see it. I, I can't tell because there's no words. It ain't enough for me to put on this head wrap and the skirt and fringes. Ain't enough for me to, you know, smile and shalom on a Sabbath day. What am I doing? What are my works that I'm putting in? You know, um, whatever it is, you see your neighbor, your sister don't have fringes. Don't talk about it behind her back or talk down to her. Help her. Maybe she don't have the funds to do so. Maybe all she has is pants in her drawer. In her in her wardrobe maybe all she has is pants don't talk about her help her be a help we're supposed to help each other and um it could be some somebody on the street if you see that they need help and you have the help do it doesn't it make you feel good to just give somebody and i don't never give money but if I see somebody on the side of the street, most of the time the signs say anything helps. So I ask if, if you're hungry and I go and get them something to eat. It could take five minutes out of my journey to go back to the Burger King or whatever it is, get them a bag or something and bring it back. That's how I'm going to help. You know, if I if I see the, the a, a lady and her children them and they got holy clothes and stuff and I know I got enough at home I got hand me downs or I could go to the, the store and just buy something real quick. That I mean I'm I'm gonna spend it to help and that's what we're supposed to do. 
That's what we're supposed to do. Especially as women. A lot of us do, can precept upon precept. And we're not going out on the highways and hedges like the men are doing. Okay? So how are you? How are you standing up for the Father? How are you putting in your works? Okay? How are you going to defy what they not what in this country they naturally want you to do, which is sit back and don't do not stand up for the word of God. You know? Um now is the time to come out of your to, to, to come out of your shell, to come out of the darkness. And step into the light where you should be. You're a child of light, so be a light. We're called to be a light, not just among Israel, but among all nations. Among all of them. Okay? If somebody is in need, help them. I could see a heathen child outside about to get run down in the street. I'm going to, if I can help that, I'm going to help the child. I'm not going to just watch their own. That's a heathen, so I just won't let you. No, I'm, that doesn't even make sense. That's not that's not flowing in the fruits of the spirit. That's not how you want us to operate here in this land and w where we are right now. He, he he sent us out as sheep amongst the wolves. We can't conform to wolves. Okay, we can't take on their traits. Right, you have to be that light. Wherever you go. And I'm speaking to myself because it's really hard to maintain a, a count, a, 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 um, your continence and your spirit in trying times. It's really, really hard. And that's why we need each other. That's why we need each other to fall on each other and to, to, to reassure each other. You know, it might be something you read already, but to hear it from a sister that gives you know, <laughs> um, that cares is it's reassuring. It's knowing that it's not just you. It's not just me. Israel is me We are many and we have to, we have to start coming together. So this was the point of Joshua 19. Okay. Is that we have to stand up for something. This same story happened to, um, another female here. If you keep reading down, um, it also happened to um, Adma. Um, Adma was in a um, oh, it happened in the city of Adma. If you read verse thirty-seven, okay. Um, another woman, she she died because she wanted to help someone. She wanted to help a poor man by giving him some bread. Shoot, if I'm going to die for that, I'm going to die a happy death. Thank you. We can't be around here scared. Um, you know, there's many accounts in the KJV we read that the women, rose, the, the, the um, strong women rose up from Esther, you know, um, many of them. You know, they stand, they stand firm in this belief. It's, it's not just something for you to just read at night and go to sleep. What are you going to do now? You know, it's like buying a brand new car, you don't, you don't use it. You don't ride it. That makes no sense at all. So um, I hope this video wasn't too long. Um, and I hope that even just one of my sisters got something from this, all praises, um, let's come together, let's lift up each other, um, let's continue to learn, pray, pray without ceasing, do not forget to pray, pray, pray. Pray. Your prayers don't have to be long-winded and for an hour long and, you know, out in the streets and about, you know. The Most High know what you want and what you, what you need before you even ask for it. He just wants you to come to Him, you know. Um, let's pray for the fruits of the Spirit. Let's pray that if we're going through struggles and tribulations now that 
that we that we not lose focus and that the most high give us the tools to be able to um gain the strength to get back up and keep pushing not to make things easier because it's quite contrary they're going to get harder you know and his people are not to to just be trampled over and just lay down and stay down we have a spirit of getting up and getting up and going and pushing okay it's the only set of people that could even survive what our ancestors been through and we here today so women um this is for you um ahabata which means love you and till next time shalom Honesty.